In this episode of Retro Car Guy 530, I'm going to check out the VX DOS signal probe, smart test mode, and multimeter modes. This is one of the videos in my review series of the signal probe vehicle intelligent circuit tester. I was provided this free of charge by VX DOS for review purposes. Make sure you check out the other videos in this review series. So let's get into it. I have the second probe connected to the battery here on the table. It's powered up and it's focused around the smart tests. So we'll go into that right now. I will begin with the voltage test. So let's click on OK. And right now I don't have anything but the ground connected. So to do the voltage test with this, you need to have the auxiliary ground of the signal probe connected to the ground of the vehicle or battery. And then the probe tip will be connected to the power supply for the voltage testing. So now all I'll do is I have this cable connected to the positive of the battery sitting here and I'll touch it to the probe. And you'll see that the display does change to volts DC displaying the voltage. And then the battery is showing the voltage that it has connected through the original connector for the second probe itself. So the top large voltage display is what's coming in on the tip of the segment probe for this particular test. I've now reconfigured the connectors on the segment probe to do the ohm test in the smart test. You have the aux ground connected to the ground side of the resistance you're testing and then you have the segment probe tip connecting to the other side of the load and I have a 15,000 ohm resistor and it's detecting it as a 15.3 thousand ohm resistor. Again, remove the tip from the connection. So this is a quick and easy way to do voltage testing or ohm testing. Again, you just need to connect the aux ground to the other side of the load or ground for the voltage testing. And the probe connects to either the power source for the voltage testing or the beginning of the load circuit that you want to test for ohms. And it automatically switches between both of them. Now let's check out the multimeter capabilities of the segment probe. We're going to navigate over to that with the right arrow, click on OK. And we have the volt DC on the left. We have an ohm test, we have a diode test, amp test, and a frequency test. I have the abilities to test the first four. I don't have a good way to replicate a good frequency to be tested with this, but we can see that we have the volt display on the very top. And then it has a min-max displayed based on what it's exposed to during the particular test. I have the connections ready to go here. The auxiliary ground is going to be connected to the negative, of course. And then the Sigma Probe tip is going to be connected to the positive. And I have added the Sigma Probe extension wire here with the probe being connected to that. I have a wire coming from the battery over on the side here on the positive. And this is a wire from the battery connected to the negative. So I'm going to connect these two here, the aux ground to the battery ground. And then for simplicity, I'm gonna use the alligator clip here. But you would normally just touch the probe to the voltage source that you're seeing, that you're wanting to test. And here you can see that it is tested and found 12.6 volts from the battery as well. So there's no variance here since it's from the same power source. But uh, we can see that it is testing the volts and based on if there's a fluctuation, if you were to be starting your engine or running something, your alternator, you could see the various voltage ranges here while connected. So let's move on to the ohms test. We're now going to test the resistance testing capability to display the ohms readings that's detecting. I have a 15,000 ohm resistor connected to the auxiliary ground and then the signal pro tip will be connected to the other side of the resistor and we should see the ohms amount. So let's move over to the ohms test. So we're ready to go and it's showing an infinite resistance right now. So if I touch this, we should see the 15.2 or 15.3 like I was able to observe in the smart ohms testing and then remove the connectivity so you can quickly test the ohms resistance. We do have a couple other resistors here to see how accurate it would be. Let me find another one here and do the same thing. So this should be somewhere around 220. 
218. So the resistors and the Sigma probe roughly agree. The 15,000 15, being shown at 15,300 or 200, it's a little different. I'm not quite sure which one's right. My multimeter shows roughly the same as the Sigma probe. So that concludes the resistance test with the multimeter function of the Sigma probe. Let's move on to the diode test. Let's do the diode continuity test, and this will verify that the diode is providing power in one direction and that it works all together. I have a rectifier diode, 50 volt, one amp. I connect the aux ground to the other end of the diode and then the Sigma probe tip to the lead into the diode. And it shows 0.6 volts across the diode and it shows the positive on the left side of the diode and the negative on the right. And if we flip that around, we should see no connectivity because the diode will be preventing the connectivity. And there is no, so you can see which way the diode is flowing the power through it and verify that it works. So let's move on to the amp test. We've moved on to the amp function within the multimeter mode of the Sigma probe. The wiring is a little different than I had expected. I needed clarification from VXNOS to understand the proper wiring to make sure I connected it correctly. The documentation in the user manual didn't identify this. It would seem obvious to me to put it in the positive power going to the device being amp load tested, but it's actually in the negative. So let's go through that so you make sure you're aware of it as well. The probe tip, which I'm using the extension wire here, is connected to the ground of the item being tested, not the positive. So Sigma Pro tip goes to the ground connection of the item being tested. The positive lead going to the item being tested is connected to the power source from the vehicle or the battery. So in my particular case, I have this red wire connected to the positive terminal of the battery seen off to the right here. And then the aux ground for the Sigma probe is connected to the ground of the battery. So the circuit power goes in the red wire into the positive of the device, out through the ground to the probe tip of the Sigma probe. So this connection goes to the Sigma probe tip and then through the Sigma probe and then out the aux ground to the ground of the vehicle or the battery in my particular case sitting on the desk. And of course the two alligator clips for powering the Sigma probe are connected as usual. So with this configuration, which again seems a little different to me. I would think it would be in the positive supply. It's actually in the ground. So this is the proper configuration. And when you press okay, you will see the amp load. So this is not like the actuation test in the other part of the Sigma probe. This is in line. You're actually putting the Sigma probe in the circuit itself and it's checking the amp load being drawn by that. Now I'll put a different bulb in here to show that it shows a different amp reading. If it were to exceed the capabilities of the Sigma probe, the Sigma probe would protect itself and reboot. So let's get a tail lamp in here and the ground here again gets connected to the Sigma probe tip and the positive from the battery. So let's do that same test. That should be the turn signal and brake light. And there's the tail lamp element, lamp element being illuminated. So you can see that it does display the amp draw by the device, but again, the wiring is different than I would have expected, but I'll make sure that's clearly identified again. The power from the vehicle or the battery goes to the device directly. The ground gets connected to the Sigma probe tip of the device. And then the aux ground of the Sigma probe gets connected to the ground or negative terminal of the battery in my particular case. So that concludes the amp testing using the multimeter mode. Since I don't have a convenient way to display the frequency duty cycle testing here of the multimeter mode, I'm just going to explain the fact that it does exist. It's supposed to be able to display the frequency of the signal or the duty cycle uh, in the display here. And since I don't have a great way of displaying that, just want to let you know it is present there. And I believe the connectivity is aux ground to the ground of the vehicle or the battery 
and the Sigma Pro tip to measure the signal that you're trying to measure. That's my current understanding based on the documentation. To exit the multimeter functionality, you need to press the left arrow with a long press, and that will exit the multimeter function back to the main screen. If you found the information to be helpful in this video, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload new videos just like this. And thanks for coming to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.